Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we will cover the topic. God's Law vs. Man's Law. And we will give a in-depth look at both sides. To give you a better insight and understanding of. Of how one overrides the other one. Now we hope you enjoy this video. Okay let's get going now. As God's law is a lot different to man's law. Now if you break man's law commit a crime, you may go jail or prison or maybe a fine. But it basically depends what you have done. Now if you break God's law commit a sin you may go to hell. If you do not repent from it. Now the Bible teaches us to respect all authorities including the laws of man. But God's law is unchanging and it stays intact until the end of the world. Now as far man's laws can change from one day to the next. Or whenever they want to change it to and they do not care whether you like it or not. And force you to adapt to it. Or pay the price for breaking it. Now Yahweh's law, as recorded in the Bible, identifies the moral standards he wants humanity to live by. If Yahweh's law didn't exist no one would know right from wrong. Because he is the ultimate ruler, he has the right to set the standards and make the rules of engagement. Now for you to know that the religious leaders of Jesus' day had more than 600 man-made laws they were required to obey. Now the people couldn't keep all those laws it was impossible. But yet the rulers believed. That those laws had to be obeyed in order to win God's favor. But God's laws for the spiritual world are found in the Bible, and Jesus summed up God's law with two commandments, Love the Lord your God, and, Love your neighbor. And he used a special, all-encompassing word for love, a word that includes everyone. Now everyone means everyone, and not a certain race or color of people. People need to get over it. And he didn't give exceptions in fact, he even said that we should love our enemies. Now just imagine that for a moment. Now when we find ourselves in conflict, we must look to these commands and honestly ask ourselves if we are being obedient to God. Do we really love our neighbors when they irritate us or do us wrong or stab us in the back or talk badly about us? And do we really show compassion to those who may lash out at us for reasons that we cannot comprehend or even to begin to understand? Now the Greek word for love that Jesus used implies the right kind of action that demonstrates we are followers of Christ. This kind of love is not passive, it is an action word and we are to show our love by our actions, and this is accomplished through prayer. How can we hate someone when we sincerely lift their name up before the Lord in prayer? God gave us a perfect example of love in action when he sent his son, Jesus, to earth in human form to walk among us and demonstrate the love of God. As supposed to be our example to follow. And how many of you are doing this? Now we must pray in faith, asking the Lord to strengthen us every step of the way. So that others will see Christ lived out in our lives, for the Bible tells us to pray for those who spitefully use us so that we may demonstrate the love of God to them. As found on the book of Matthew 5 verse 44-45. Now this is the loving work of the true Christian. Now what happens when the teaching of the Bible to feed the hungry and house the homeless clashes with the laws of modern government, which sometimes prohibit those acts, as happened the first thing is people are to honor the laws of the land, in so far as that it is possible, and to the clearest extent we can. And some will use the law against you if they can. That is very clear in Romans 13 where St. Paul says that all authority comes from God. But not in man-made laws now there are exceptions and that is when the laws of the land would command us to violate the higher laws of God. And that is where Christians have to draw the line. And so there have been many times now from the beginning they were godly people who stood up for what was right and said to the government, I cannot obey you. You must obey God rather than man. And this is the truth. But you see now people want to comprise the right for the wrong. Even the pastors and preachers and bishops of the day. Just for what they will gain by giving in mostly the money. Now you see the problems. They have no Bible guts and no spiritual authority. And they give in and bow to them. And others have to suffer for what they did. Now, Christians are supposed to believe that they have an obligation as men and women of God, especially clergymen, that they have to obey God's law and then man's law. If people feel man's law is in the way, there are policies in place to change the law, to make new laws. As a Christian people don't believe that I am a good example for other Christians unless you're a good neighbor. You cannot speak for others but you can challenge the law and you can make new law, even the constitution. If people don't believe man's law, then there are places people can change it. To make it better for everyone. 
Now, people also have to be respectful of your neighbors, that's part of God's word also. If you're going to do it, you have to make sure you're not offensive to your neighbors, and yes God told us to feed the poor, the prisoners. Some have taken people into their own home. People just have to make sure the re in the right place and check their motives and ask God if you are in the right place. As a Christian people are supposed to make an impact on people's lives. For the better and not pick and choose. Now as you know America has a long list of laws that eventually were replaced or thrown out after years of protests, negotiations, and advocacy, the enslavement of blacks. The restricting women from the right to vote. The use of poisons on unwanted plant life. The unchecked presidential wartime power. Now when Attorney General Jeff Sessions stated, would cite you to the Apostle Paul and his clear and wise command in Romans 13 to obey the laws of the government because God has ordained them for the purpose of order, Father James Martin, S.J. was one of many faith leaders who immediately counter-responded. Mr. Sessions is engaging in what is known as proof texting, that is, cherry-picking Bible passages to prove a point without referring to or even understanding the overall context of the quote. Often, especially in political battles, this technique is used to weaponize the Bible. The problem with proof texting is that there is always another Bible verse, or in this case many Bible verses, that can be used to refute the one chosen. To rebut Mr. Sessions, one could easily respond with a line in that same passage in which St. Paul says, Owe nothing to anyone, except to love one another for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, as found in Romans 13 verse 8 9. Now Yahweh's law, as recorded in the Bible, identifies the moral standards he wants humanity to live by. If Yahweh's law didn't exist no one would know right from wrong. Because he is the ultimate ruler, he has the right to set the standards and make the rules of engagement. People do not have to obey God's law. If they do not want to. But there is a price to pay. And as we see people in America and especially in third world countries who are copying what America does. And those who are doing this will bring harm to others and themselves and their country. But they do not seem to care. Oh they say they do but their actions and the way they treat others will tell a different story. And we admire those countries who stand up with guts for what is right. And going against the wrong. What is God's first law in the Bible? Obedience is the first law of heaven. What does it mean to obey God's law? In simple terms it means hearing the word of God and acting on it. It implies aligning our will to God's will doing what God has asked us to do. It is when we completely surrender to his authority and base our decisions and our actions on his word. So why is it important to obey God's laws? By obeying in all things, even the mundane, you are showing God that you are willing and able to obey whatever he asks of you. Obedience to God is not only a way to worship him, but a way to get closer to him, prepare for whatever he leads you to and grow as a person. In Matthew 5 verse 17 18, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. Which law did Jesus fulfill? The law of carnal commandments and much of the ceremonial law were fulfilled at the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The law functioned under the Aaronic priesthood and was a preparatory gospel to bring its adherence to Christ. How did Jesus fulfill the law of God? For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. What are the two laws of God in the Bible? In the book of Matthew 22 verse 37 40. 37 Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. 38 This is the first and great commandment. 39 And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 40 On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. What are the three laws from Jesus? The three laws are first fasting, second fast offerings, and third tithing. These laws come with promised blessings. Now God, is our creator and the creator of the whole universe and gives you the air to breathe each and every day you live. And he gave people free will to think and act and lets people do whatever they want to do. And they will. But they do not want to take responsibility for their actions. No matter who it hurts or kills or damages. They just do not care. And most of them complain about everything under the sky. Now Christians today should live life free of murder, theft, lies, idolatry, covetousness, adultery, 
etc. and treat others with love and kindness at least they're supposed to, but they do it because they're obeying Christ's law, not the law of Moses. When Lucifer or Satan had so much as the thought of, I will not serve, he was immediately cast out of heaven and into hell. But when people as humans can disobey God, ignore his commandments, and arrogantly follow our own wills and ways of thinking, and laws of the land it is nothing but completely oblivious to anything but their own selfish desires. And does not give a damn who it hurts or kills or damages. As long as they're in control. We recently saw a commercial on TV where an attorney said that something is not only wrong, but it's illegal. As though morality and the laws of God are not really that important, but man's laws are more important and should be taken more seriously. Oh really it's tough teaching our kids right from wrong when the laws of our society sometimes directly oppose the teachings of the church. Now God's law says, you shall not kill. But man's law says that it is legal in America for any woman to end the life of her unborn child. Without questions and the rest of the world is following this example. And you see these ignorant people and so-called pastors and preachers. Twisting scriptures and taking them out of context to support this. And saying that Jesus Christ never said anything about it. Which is a lie. So they think in their ungodly thinking they have the rights to do this. And they're not even doing what he commanded them to do in the first place. And they're twisting it as well. And as you look at the country they're in it is falling apart. And those stupid people are being controlled and told what to do. And their children's minds are being filled all kinds of hate and bitterness. And evil. And they're asking the questions why. And they should know the answer. But blame everything on God of heaven. And make fun of Jesus Christ. For their problems they created in the first place. And basically telling kids that something is not only wrong, and then make them do it anyway and knowing it's illegal not only makes it confusing for children to figure out how they are supposed to live and act. Besides when you have a messed up ungodly teacher who does even know what a woman is. Or saying a man can get pregnant. Then you see why there are major problems. But you see the children are innocent in the eyes of God of heaven. For a child is a gift from heaven. And it's most prized possession. And see demonic people killing and taking advantage of the precious gift of heaven. It's not right and they will pay for the ungodly acts. Man's laws exist out of convenience in a society to control the society. But God's laws exist out of his pure love for us. And there is a big big difference. Just so you know third world countries like to imitate America. In everything they do. As they live in fear of their governments. Now back when the coronavirus hit in the world. And there is one country and they're still pushing it. And the only reason is they're making money from it lining their pockets. Now everywhere you went. All you heard all the time they are protecting you. From what? And they claimed they're a God-loving country. Which God you may ask God of heaven or the God of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 says. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them but you will find out what it is really like when you visit it for yourself. As most of them are racist. And controlled as they're looking for a savior. In anyone who claims to be a messenger of God. But they will have a picture of a white Jesus Christ. And worship that and they hate you cause you're white. And want to look just like you. And think you're more privileged than them and you are treated more badly than they ever know you are. But you just do not say nothing. Except in prayer alone with God of heaven through Jesus Christ. As he knows and sees everything going on. But what the people fail to realize is your blood is just as red as their blood is. And do not think anyone is going to help you. Only if they can get something from you. Well if you're lucky you may find true Christians maybe three or four or more that really have a heart of God and truly really care. And they will treat you like you're a human instead of a dog in the street. And you will see homeless people living in cemeteries and people laughing at them. And it just breaks your heart to see this. But they are protecting by gods of heaven's hands. As no one cares about them. You see how messed up this is. Since the Jews were forbidden to eat pork, not just because God decided to make another rule to follow, but because people used to die from trichinosis found in pork in those days. It was a law in order to protect the lives and health of God's people because he loved them. None of God of heaven laws are arbitrary rules that people must follow. Just because he is the boss. They were given to all for people around the world. 
Now God's love is for all people all over the world. And John 3 verse 16 states this. And he created them to keep us from harms and dangers. That come from the enemy Satan. From disobeying the law. But people got to do it their own way. And messed everything up for everyone else. Chasing after other gods and making their own false gods to worship and want everyone to believe that crap. Instead of the real truth from one true God of heaven. Just like those people did in the Bible in Roman and the Israelites did in Egypt. And it all started when Eve was deceived in the garden by Satan. When she took the fruit from the tree and then gave it to Adam who in turn Adam blame Eve for what happened afterwards. Do you see the point here? And when people do this. There is a price to be paid unless people repent and accept Jesus Christ. And if people could experience what the price they will pay. People would think twice about doing it. But since they can't. As once you die. There is no coming back. Cause no one is going to believe what you say anyway. So people better get it right before they die. And they never know when that day is coming. Now God's commandment not to commit adultery, which most churches seem to understand or you think they would. To mean any sex outside of marriage, is also there to protect us. But they want to defile the true meaning of marriage between one man and one woman. As it was in the beginning. And with this comes the problems. That God never intended for people to encounter. And then they make man-made laws to uphold the sins. Then you have these so-called preachers and pastors who comprise and twisted God's word to uphold the sins. Instead of calling it what it really is. Cause they do not want to hurt anyone's feelings. But in the long run it is not helping it is destroying them. They're a bunch of cowards. Who will not stand up against the evil instead they embraced it with open arms. Now ask yourself this question. If people would have obeyed this commandment, there would be no rampant sexually transmitted diseases, no unwanted pregnancies, no broken-hearted teenagers who are not emotionally equipped to handle sex. But you see people want to do their own thing without taking responsibility for their actions. And want to leave God out of the picture. But when things mess up, then they want to blame God of heaven for their problems. Now people may not always clearly understand God's laws, but out of humility, people should accept and follow them. After all he is God. And who are we to question him or anything he tells us? Why are people so arrogant and prideful? Especially because God of heaven truly loves us and wants only the best for us. But most people cannot see this for themselves. Instead of reading the Bible themselves with the help of the Holy Spirit and get the full meaning of what the text and scriptures is saying instead twisted it and make it say something it was never intended to say. Or taking some word of some preacher or pastor cause half of them are ignorant to the word of God. And remember they only know what someone told them at a school or maybe one of their family members was a pastor or preacher. But when a person hears something they always add their own opinions to it. Whether it is right or wrong. And people seem to believe what they're saying is the truth. Cause the people never took the time to read and study the Bible themselves and you see the major problems with this. Now this all goes back to people not taking responsibility for their own actions. It is our Christian duty and responsibility to love our neighbor. As Jesus Christ command to love thy neighbor as thyself. But people cannot do this cause they do not love themselves and in this they have serious heart problems. So tell me how can they care and show love to others. If they're always judging others by their skin color. And this is the main issue they like to use. Now we're talking about the real love Jesus Christ did for the whole world he gave his life for. And what he stood for and how he treated others. People who are opposed of this are the troublemakers. Not the ones who show the love and compassion of Jesus Christ. Now if no our neighbor he or she is gay, we care about them just the same. As Jesus Christ would care about them and share the truth with them. If they like to listen. But our actions toward them will tell us where they want to know or not. And we are not one to shove religion down their throat. And return they should not shove their lifestyle down our throat either. Now we don't judge, and we don't hate. Now we just straight up tell it like it is. Now however, we don't need to make or force a law that we accept as higher than God's law in order to endorse that lifestyle. And we do not have to. Cause the ones who make this law does not give a damn about them. Cause they know it is wrong. But you see there are a bunch of ungodly people who are on their way to hell and they need company. So they want you to think they care. But in reality they really do not. 
And this is the truth that you heard from us. As Christians we must love the sinners, not the sin. As we were all sinners, at one time and no one is perfect and we cannot guess that God hates someone else's sin more than your own. Sin is sin to God's eyes. But neither should people pass laws that say it's right and good to disobey God. For people as humans to make a law that directly and defies God's law is arrogance and pride. And just plain stupidity. Now if we embrace the socially acceptable law it is okay and right. Now if a woman chooses to abort her baby, people defy God's love for human life. And no one has the right whatsoever to take anyone's life. Cause the baby is a gift from God of heaven and it has done nothing to anyone. And someone want to kill it for their convenience. This is so messed up. But if a woman decides to terminate her pregnancy, either cause she slept around too much, or dresses revealing things she should not be showing in public to make her get raped by some sick sicko, who is influenced by pornography that is seen all over social media platforms and in movies and commercials. Now we ask people do you see where is the major problems are at? Now it is absolutely wrong to judge her. This defies God's love too. Now we cannot begin to know what is in her heart, or who and what influenced her to do what she did. But we have a good ideal ourselves. To why this happens all the time. And yes we agree only God can judge. But Jesus Christ wants people to love and accept her, and to help and befriend her. Not browbeat her or look down on her because abortion is a sin. Cause of the peer pressure she was under to why she did what she did. And this is the major issues no one wants to talk about or address. Just kill and abort the innocent baby. Cause it is nothing. And most people just follow the crowd whether they are right or wrong just to fit in. As for us we do not follow anyone but God of heaven through Jesus Christ. And his word the Bible. Always remember that we are all sinners, at one time. But some of us are blessed enough that we were never faced with someone else's challenges or choices. But when God looks at you in heart, you're no better than the other people. You're a sinner saved by his love and grace. And there is nothing you can do to, in order to receive this free gift of salvation except to ask for it and receive it by faith. Now you see in this picture at what we are talking about. There is a lot of rebellion going on here in this picture and it is very disturbing to people who see this. And that these young people in this day and age are acting like this and have no respect and truly care nothing about their self-image or their family name. And people are probably wondering what happened to her parents. The reason she is acting like this. Well maybe her parents know about this and maybe they do not. Who knows? But there is one thing that is wrong with this picture. What is she having sex for anyway? When should be doing something positive and productive with her life instead doing this crap to herself? We can just about honestly say some guy lied to her and said he loved her and spread her legs for him. And then when bam thank you ma'am. As it takes two. And she fell for this stupid crap. Now you people these young people are controlled by society of ungodly people to pass laws on this and they will abuse the hell out of it. To get these young girls to run around and get pregnant and kill a innocent baby. That done nothing to no one. And if you speak up about this then they want to silent you or put you in jail for some made up trash. You never did in the first place. And does girl even know what they do with this innocent baby after they pull it out of her? Or does she really give a damn? And basically the picture shows she does not give a damn. All she wants is views and followers. On the worst platform to be on. And influence others to do the same damn thing she is doing. And we can almost bet she will go back out and do the same thing again and again. Over and over. Basically she has no guilty conscience of doing anything wrong. And this the way a lot of them think. Now in Jesus' time, the law stated a woman caught in adultery could be stoned to death. But Jesus is all about love and forgiveness and second chances. We read in the Bible that he saved the adulteress he didn't punish her. He told her to go and sin no more. Now God love people, but not the sin people commit. God loves us. He sent his son to die for us. He doesn't make laws to hurt us. The laws he made would bring people together. Instead of division. Cause he looks on the heart of the person and not the skin color or appearance when people make up their own laws. In conflict with his, they can harm us in ways people can't even understand. It's simple really. If we love God, we will keep his commands. But some so-called Christians believers 
cannot even do that. They're too busy pointing fingers at others and judging others just like the world does. And want to justify one person is better than the other one. Because of the color of their skin. Now Christians today should live a life free of murder, theft, lies, idolatry, covetousness, adultery, etc. and always treat others with love and kindness at least they're supposed to, but they do that because they're obeying Christ's law, not the law of Moses. Now if we accept this and repent of our sin and put our faith in Christ, our sins are covered by the blood of Christ. Now if we reject Christ, then we must pay the price for our own sin. Now God could not simply forgive us without somebody paying the price as God would be nullifying his own law or making himself unrighteous. Now how would you feel if the person who ruthlessly murdered your son or daughter was simply let off by the judge? Just because he or she said I am sorry. Now if we get a parking ticket or a speeding ticket, it doesn't matter how many times we park the car properly or drive under the speed limit after that we still have to pay the ticket. Now it is the same with God but the punishment is death. Now it doesn't matter who pays the price so long as the penalty is paid and the offender stops doing the wrong thing. Now we have all sinned and so we have all fallen short of the glory of God and the punishment for sin is death. Now Jesus came and paid the price for us. So we do not have to. Now all we have to do is repent and look to him for our salvation and we shall receive the gift of eternal life. By faith and trust in what Jesus Christ did for us. And some people cannot even do that. On the other hand, how should we as stewards of God's grace treat our fellow man when he sins? The Bible says, Forgive and you will be forgiven. Judge and you will be judged. Do to others as you would have them do unto you. What's more, the Bible says, If we do not forgive, we will not be forgiven. There is the parable of the unmerciful servant who was forgiven his debt but did not forgive those indebted to him he was thrown in jail. Just because God lets us off when we break his law provided we are covered by Christ's precious blood. It does not mean that we will escape man's punishment. Yes you're forgiven by God through Jesus Christ. But the crimes you did on this earth like murder and stealing or committing adultery. There will be jail or prison and fines and hurt people will have to pay. As Christians, we still must suffer the consequences of breaking man's laws. As mentioned before. Of course, we may get a lighter sentence if we are remorseful and demonstrate true repentance. There may be ameliorating factors. Now the victim may choose not to press charges. There may be obligatory sentencing. Often people will always may break God's law without breaking man's law. Man's law is limited to what can be proven but God knows our heart. Sin and abuse are very similar. Now when people abuse somebody they are committing a sin. Now this includes violence, spouse abuse, child abuse and rape which are also against man's law. Strictly speaking though, sin is to disobey God cause sin usually results in us abusing somebody, somehow, be it ourselves, others or God. Now some types of abuse are hard to prove and some are not even against man's law. For example, emotional abuse, swearing, taking people for granted, being lazy not pulling your weight, adultery, homosexuality, idolatry, fornication, being domineering or controlling, selfishness, pride, arrogance, being unforgiving and hating one another. Racism falls in this as well. God, however, knows our heart and our motives and the things that we do in secret. As in Proverbs 5 verse 21 for the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. So do not think you're hiding nothing from God of heaven. He is omniscient he knows and sees everything good or bad. Now remember, perfect love casts out all fear. Now we should not be those who are motivated by fear but our actions should be motivated by love. Now it takes a lot of love to forgive some people and it is sometimes hard not to fear. But just remember the parable of the unmerciful servant. We thank you so much for watching. And we pray that you have more insight and understanding concerning God's laws to man's laws. And we hope you will consider visiting our website and our Bible Power Store. The links are in the description. Now we thank you so much. As we will be back with another video as the Lord wills. Just as soon as we can. Now until then, please take care, and may God of heaven through Jesus Christ, watch over you and your family to keep them safe, is our prayer.